Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. We're talking about the week of January 27th this time around. Uh, it's a throwback week. Uh, those of you who've been watching, I've been doing these for years now. I, I don't know how many years, three or four years. Uh, we've been doing these weekly sky watching videos. And those of you who've been watching for a long time, you, you know that every now and then in the past, We've done these where we lay something out for each night of the week. You don't actually have to watch most of them. If the Samoon is involved, for sure, and sometimes the planets, you want to watch on the night that in question or a meteor shower or something like that. Uh, most of them you can watch any night of the week. Sometimes the moon interferes, other, other things like that. But we'd, we'd say, okay, here's seven different nights uh, of observing for you this week. Uh, we've gotten away from that, haven't done that much. If you, if you, Why wouldn't you? I, why wouldn't you go back and watch every one of these in the series for the last four years or however long it's been and, and just have a great binge watch of all of these things. And you'll see these things pop up. So this is what we're going to do. So here I am wasting time and we don't have time to talk about the, uh, all of these things very much because we've got so many things. First night uh, that we're talking about, the 27th to the morning of the 28th, we're looking at Orion. Orion is on the meridian, that imaginary line that runs north-south directly overhead sometime between 11 and midnight, meaning it's up all night. And so as it gets dark, you'll see it hanging to the east by the middle of the night. There it is. Well, for those of us who live as far north as I do, it's to the south there uh, a little bit as you look high in the sky, but to the south. And then by morning, there it is settling into the horizon uh, on the west. Uh, so I tried to draw that up here. It's a terrible wreck. That's what happens when I try to squeeze everything, a whole week's worth of stuff, into a, a, a board like this. Uh, and in the old days, I used to erase and rewrite, and that was even worse, as you, my handwriting is not great, right? You can't see up in that corner. It doesn't focus well anyway. We don't have great focus across the entire board here. So Orion is redrawn down here. And so there's Orion, and you've got your bright stars, Betelgeuse, big bright orange star, Betelgeuse, and a big bright blue-white star, Rigel. And so get out there and enjoy Orion. If you haven't observed Orion before, uh, one of the great constellations to get to know. And if you know Orion well, uh, enjoy the old friend right there. Now, down below the bottom star in the belt, I'll try to make that better, is the Great Orion Nebula. This is a star birth region. We're going to talk more about star birth regions in a moment. You've got this region where stars have formed relatively recently, uh, where you have a cloud of gas that sits in space. You've got this cloud of gas that sits in space. Gravity is trying to pull it inward. Gas pressure is trying to push it outward. And as it, 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 those things live largely in equilibrium, where, where the cloud just sits there and it's happy, unless something happens. And oftentimes that something that happens is a supernova explosion. And a supernova explosion sends a shock wave through space that hits the cloud and causes a little more inward uh, force. It causes gravity to win over the outward gas pressure, and it collapses and makes stars. Uh, it can form one star if it's a little cloud of gas, or it can form a hundred stars or a thousand stars as you break these little, get little micro density, a denser region here and a denser region here and a denser region here, and it can start to accrete material and you form all this, and you've got a star forming region. And then what happens is those stars, often you have big bright stars that form. They're not many. You don't form many of these very large stars, but they're really bright with a lot of ultraviolet light, and they don't live very long. So the only place you see them is in a nebula like this. Uh, so that's the Orion Nebula, M42 in the Messier catalog. Uh, the Orion Nebula, the only place you see these bright big stars is in these uh, star birth regions. And then they illuminate the gas around from which those stars were born, a big gas cloud from which those stars were born. Uh, there's another part of a gas cloud up here uh, that's a little bit closer to this star, M78. And so you, this whole region is just encompassed in nebulosity uh, where you've got gas and dust and stuff like that. But you see these stars that just turned on in the Orion Nebula there and, and form the, so you'll see these bright stars, sometimes called the trapezium, uh, these, these four bright stars down in the core that are these OB associations. These are called sometimes O and B stars, big bright stars uh, that illuminate. So this is what's going on. Young stars just formed in this nebula right there. This is one of the most impressive objects in a small telescope. Binoculars show it really well. You see it with your naked eye. Uh, often marks the sword of Orion hanging below that uh, bottom star of the belt, the, the west eastmost star of the belt right there. Um, so to get, get to know your stars of Orion a little bit. Make sure you recognize that pattern, love that pattern. We'll come back on the second and third. We'll come back to that night at the end of the week, uh, that part of the sky at the end of the week. So we don't have very long. What have we talked? It looks like we've talked uh, uh, at least a third of our time already. <laughs> we got what night done. Yeah, we're, we're off to a great start. Uh, the next night, the 28th and the 29th, 
This is the morning of the 29th. I have been enjoying the summer triangle every morning. Now, for the last week or so, we've had some clear skies in the morning. We haven't for the last few days. But, but prior to that, uh, we've had clear skies. you got the Neb, Vega, and Altair. Three bright stars. You're looking east, a little bit north of east. Altair will be the southernmost. to start just climbing over the horizon. David, Deneb, and Vega are up pretty high by 6 o'clock in the morning or 6.30 in the morning. So go out before sunrise, 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, take a look at Deneb, Vega, Altair. It depends a little bit on your local time. Right smack in the middle of the summer triangle, you've got Alberio, A-L-B-I-R-E-O. I, I mix my E's and my I's up sometimes. I have more on that at another time. That's a nice, relatively bright third magnitude star. Uh, beautiful, beautiful double star. So you got a small telescope. We've got a blue star and a gold star in there. Easy to resolve. What are your better top, uh, what are your better objects, uh, binary star objects, uh, 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 double star objects in the, it, that you can go look at? And you've got um, this star that's it's a little bit brighter than the other stars around at third magnitude, right smack in the heart of there. So go check that out. Next night, 29th into the 30th, uh, let's talk about Jupiter. So Jupiter sits, there, there's Orion. Uh, and Terry's, uh, no, 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 Aldebaran is the orange star that sits up there in Taurus, and Jupiter's up here. So you've got a bright orange star, and you've got big, bright white Jupiter sitting right there. Jupiter has been in retrograde motion, moving west against the background stars for a long time now. It's just about, it's not going to quite get it done this week, but it's going to do it next week. Turn around and go back into prograde motion. Start moving east against the background stars again. What that means is it's almost at a standstill this week. If you're trying to measure its motion against the background stars, very hard to do for the next week or two, but then it's going to start picking up steam and moving uh, back to the east. It sits right now between two objects. There's bright Jupiter, about one and two-third degrees uh, above to the north of Jupiter, maybe a little bit to the... Uh, east of Jupiter is Tau, the, the star Tau Tauri, the Greek letter Tau, and uh, it's pretty close. Uh, remember, your finger and arm's length is about a degree. Uh, so it's just over a finger width or two finger widths uh, above uh, Jupiter right there. We talked about this star a few weeks ago. Uh, it's a multiple star system. Those two components are really close to each other. You're not going to be able to resolve it in your small telescope. Uh, they orbit each other with a period of about 58 years, but one of those stars, the brightest, uh, brighter of those two stars, is a spectroscopic binary. So we got on this kick for several weeks in a row where we were talking about spectroscopic binaries, and this is one of them that we did. And it was one of our three-day periods where you see dark lines in the spectrum, the, the, the rainbow of light that the star makes. And you'll see these dark lines, and they'll split. Uh, one, star, one, one of the stars is coming towards you, causing a blue shift, so the wavelength gets shorter. And one of the stars is moving away from you, the wavelength gets longer. And you see this is, this is wavelength as a function of time. And you see, one, you, you see them moving back and forth. Uh, uh, sometimes shorter, one's shorter, one's longer, and you see these start these lines dancing back and forth. So that's a great thing. Now down below Tau, uh, about three times farther away, about just over four degrees the other direction, Jupiter lines, there's a line right there, and Jupiter lines right on that line between these two objects is NGC 50, 1555, sometimes called Heinz Variable Nebula. And this is another star birth region. Uh, and in this star birth region, you have what are called pre-main sequence stars, stars that are not yet getting most of their power from fusing hydrogen into helium into the core. They're, they're, they're still uh, accreting while the protostars are accreting. They're, they're, they're still collapsing down. They haven't yet reached hydrostatic equilibrium. Uh, and so they're still getting smaller and, 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 and getting most of their their luminosity, most of the energy they're radiating from gravitational potential that's, that, that, that they're, they're giving up as they, as they, uh, as they collapse. And uh, these stars are, uh, these new stars that are forming, so, sometimes are t tau stars, not Tau, not Greek, but the uh, Arabic letter, the t tau stars, um, the, the Roman letter, the, the t, t tau stars that we have right there. Uh, and this T star, these are variable stars, and they're erratically variable. Uh, so they're variable on all kinds of timescales from minutes to days, and get brighter and dimmer and brighter and dimmer. And so these stars, we think that, we don't really know, but for sure, but we think that the, the brightness variation on the scale of days goes uh, from sort of a star rotation, big star spots, dark sunspots on the surface appearing and disappearing, but it's also interacting with a disk of material that's around it from which it was formed, and so that disk will be obscuring it sometimes and not obscuring it sometimes, and you have volatility with that interaction with the disk, and so Titari is doing all of these things. So that's going on right here in this region. Uh, the next night, 30th into the 31st, 
Rising at about 4 a.m., probably a little bit earlier if you've got a good horizon to the southeast, is Antares. So look to the east, to the, well to the south of where you've observed the summer triangle. Should be a bright orange star. Antares, the rival of Mars. So it's a bright red star that's down there on the, on the southeast, southeastern horizon, uh, starting at 4 to 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. By 6 o'clock, when I've been watching this, the summer triangle, uh, you can see Antares really well. I can see Antares really well down that direction. These are stars of summer, but there they are, climbing into the sky in spring. So we're going to see them higher and higher in the sky by the time we get to summer. There they are as it gets dark way, uh, you know, directly, directly overhead, close to the meridian line. Uh, 16 degrees, a fist and a half above Antares to the north, almost straight up. The next brightest star you come to, Antares is really bright, you get Zeta Ophiuchi. Uh, Zeta Ophiuchi is a, a two and a half magnitude star, maybe, so pretty bright star. You can see, remember, you can see down to about five, probably, counts backward. So it's a pretty bright star, and just a couple of degrees to the south and the west of Zeta Ophiuchi is a globular star cluster M107. Try it with your binoculars, try it with your small telescope, uh, see if you can pull that out. 31st into the 1st, what I'm recommending. Now, these are the nights where you need to do this on the night. These others, you can mix these up, but these need to be done on the night. 31st in, in the 1st, and we're talking about the evening of the 31st here is what we're talking about. Uh, we were talking about the morning of the 31st there. We're talking about the evening of the 31st here. The moon is going to be a really slender crescent, about 8%. Look west just at sunset. This is, this, these two nights are probably the don't miss objects of the week. Uh, you look west. An 8% full moon is going to be sitting just 2.5 degrees. The moon itself is about half a degree wide, so about, uh, about five moon diameters, uh, four, uh, five moon diameters uh, away fra from Saturn. So you'll see the bright star Saturn, the bright dot Saturn that looks like a star, and you've got the moon that's a thin crescent. That's going to be beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Get some pictures on your phone uh, or whatever you take pictures with. Get out and take that. One night later, the moon will have moved over to the east as it does, and it will have doubled. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's illumination. It'll be about 15% full, and it's going to be sitting between Venus and Neptune. We talked about Venus and Neptune last week. Go back and look that if you want to. Um, I think it was just last week. Uh, Venus and Neptune are about three and a third degrees apart uh, now. So we've got big, bright Venus above, brightest object around this part of the sky. Neptune sits down below there. Probably can't see it without your binoculars, but you probably can see it with your binoculars. And now the moon has just crossed that line. is about 15% full and sits only about a degree and a half above Neptune. Depends on what time you're looking, uh, of course. Uh, it's probably the, the illuminated edge of the moon is probably closer to a degree away from Neptune. So you find the moon in your binoculars and just look down and right from the moon. And the, and the next brightest object you come to should be Neptune on this night. So that's also going to be a spectacular view. Just Venus with the moon is great. If you can find Neptune, too, that's a, that's a victory. These are the things you want to do. Now, the last night we're going to talk about here, uh, the, the night of the second and the morning of the third, we go back and we looked at Orion, uh, down below Orion, so south of Orion and to the east of Orion is the brightest star in the sky, Sirius. So if you find the bright pattern of Orion, you'll see Sirius, because it's going to be brighter than any of the stars in Orion. Stars can be bright because they're, they're luminous. Stars can be bright because uh, they're relatively close to us. Sirius is a little bit of each. Uh, so go appreciate Sirius for just being the brightest star in the sky and enjoy it. Four degrees below Sirius, uh, you know, again, half a fist width below Sirius is the open star cluster M41. Uh, go find it with your telescope. That's one that holds up pretty well to a telescope. You've got a small telescope, fun view of glittering stars that appear in your, your eyepiece field of view there. Uh, you probably can see it with your binoculars as a hazy patch there. And that's our week of observing. That's what we got. We got a lot. We talked fast. We went through a lot of things because we wanted to give you something to look at. So hopefully you have a great week and hopefully you have clear skies. And as always, thanks for watching, everybody.